Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today RGCSC. This video is a tutorial on Physics, Paper 6, Variant 6-2 for October-November 2023 examinations. Question 1. A student investigates the period of a pendulum. Figure 1.1 shows the setup. Question A. The distance D is measured from the bottom of the clamp. This is the bottom of the clamp. To the center of the bob. This is the center. The student adjusts the length of the pendulum until D equals to 50 cm. He displaces the bob slightly and releases it so that it swings. He uses a stopwatch to measure the time T for 10 complete oscillations. Part 1. Figure 1.2 shows the reading on the stopwatch. Record in table 1.1 the time for 10 complete oscillations. And then for part 2, we are required to calculate and record in table 1.1 the period T of the pendulum. The period is the time for one complete oscillation. For part 3, we are required to calculate T square. And for part 4, we are required to write the units. All these four parts is to be done on table 1.1. So the units for distance is centimeter. For time is seconds. T here is the period T of the pendulum whereby is the time taken for one complete oscillations. So as long as it is time, it will be in seconds. This here is t being squared. Therefore, the unit here would be s squared. At the length of 50 centimeters, the stopwatch was at 14 seconds and 21 milliseconds. This is the value for 10 oscillations. And if you're looking to find for one complete oscillations, we're going to divide it by 10, giving us 1.42. The answers on the table are given at two decimal points, so I'm also going to leave our answers here in two decimal points. And for the value of t square, it's going to be 1.42 times 1.42, giving us 2.02. Question B. The student repeats the procedure in part A using d 100 centimeters. The readings and results are shown in table 1.1. Another student suggests that t square is directly proportional to d. Explain briefly how to test the suggestion using the results in table 1.1, meaning that you will obtain a straight line passing through the origin. Therefore, in order to test the suggestion, we can plot a graph of t square against d to see if we get a straight line passing through the origin. Question C. The procedure can be repeated to plot a graph. Suggest additional values of d that are suitable for this experiment. Initially, for the value of D, we've got 50 cm and 100 cm. So any additional value lesser than 50 or in between 50 to 100 will be acceptable. And you should provide at least three values. Part D, explain how you would measure the distance D as accurately as possible. Draw a diagram to help your explanation. This was the setup shown in figure 1.1. As you can see, the distance includes the measurement of the string and additionally, you have the radius of the ball included. To measure the distance of the length of the string would be pretty simple. You're going to place a set square and a ruler in a perpendicular position and get the reading of the string. Using two blocks, we can measure the diameter of the ball using a ruler. And to get only the tip until the center of the bob, that would be the radius, meaning that the diameter measured will be divided by 2 to get the radius. So we'll use the first measurement here and then add up with the radius of the ball. Next, explain why timing 10 oscillations gave a more accurate result for the period T than timing 1 oscillation. Whenever you are given with a question about accuracy, you always have to repeat your experiment and then get the average of it because this can reduce the percentage of error and give you a more accurate reading. Question 2. A student investigates the resistance of a wire. Figure 2.1 shows the circuit used. You have got the power source, a switch, an emitter to measure current, and here from the point B to C, we have got a resistance wire, and then a voltmeter is attached to the sliding contact. For those of you who don't know the experiment of resistance of a wire, let me just briefly explain to you how it works. Hereby, we are using a variable resistor, whereby the resistance changes based on the length. If you have a long resistor wire connected to a circuit and you have a sliding contact like this, and when you move the sliding contact right, 
two left, you are changing how much of wire is in the circuit. If the whole resistance of the wire is 10 ohms, and you place your sliding contact in the middle, this will give you the resistance about 5 ohms. So that's what's going on over here. You can change the position of your sliding contact to allow how much of resistance should be in the circuit. Just remember that as your length increases, your resistance will also increase. Question A. The student places a sliding contact S at a distance of L equals to 40 cm from B. She measures the potential difference V across the length L of the resistance wire. She measures the current in the circuit. The meters are shown in figure 2.2 and figure 2.3. Part 1. Write down the current I. The voltmeter here is showing us a value of 1.2 and the ammeter here is showing us a value of 0.34 amperes. Since you are asked for current, you are going to look at the ammeter. Make sure you leave your answers in two significant figures. Part 2. Record the potential difference V reading in the first row of table 2.1. And for question B, the student repeats the procedure in A using L50 cm, 60, 70 and 80. The readings are shown in figure table 2.1. Part 1. Calculate and record in table 2.1 the values of resistance R using the equation of this. So all this part of the question will be solved on table 2.1. So the length is measured in centimeters, the potential difference is measured in the unit of voltage, and the resistance will be ohms. The voltmeter here is the reading for 40 centimeters, which is 1.2 voltage. So I'm going to write 1.2 here. To calculate the resistance, we have already been given the formula, which is R equals to V over I. And the I is fixed at 0.34 amperes. Just substitute the value into the formula and you will get these answers for resistance. Since the voltage is only one decimal place, therefore I will also leave the resistance in one decimal place. Question C. Plot a graph of R, Y axis against voltage X axis. Start both axes at the origin of 0, 0. Draw the best fit line. Okay, the first step here is to label your axis. When labeling axis, do not forget to include your units. Next, for your step 2, we are going to label the scales. For the y axis here, we have a range from 3.5 to 7.1. And for the voltage, the range is between 1.2 to 2.4. On my y axis, I have got 5 boxes. And I can use a scale of 0 to 10. So my highest scale, which is 10, divided by 5 boxes, will give me 2 for each boxes. So here I've got the scale for my y-axis. Always remember that your highest scale should occupy more than half of the grid. So you're good to use scale of 2 for each boxes. And now for the x-axis, similarly, you have got 5 boxes, and the highest scale here is 2.4. So what I can do here is increase this to 2.5 as it is the multiple of 5. I can divide it by 5 giving me 0.5 for each boxes. Now for step 3, we can plot the points. Now a best fit line means that you're going to draw a straight line that connects as many points as you can and then extend it to wherever it stops. A best fit line doesn't necessarily mean that you have to start from your origin point. As long as it is a continuous straight line, that will be considered as a best fit line. Question D. Determine the gradient of the graph. Show clearly on the graph how you obtain the necessary information. You can simply take two points apart and use the triangle method to find the change of x and the change of y for its gradient. Make sure you show clearly on the graph the points that you have chosen to find the gradient. And from my calculation here, I got a gradient of 3.0. According to your marking schemes, any value between 2.8 to 3.2 is an acceptable answer. Question 3. A student investigates the cooling of water under different conditions. Figure 3.1 shows the setup. So you've got a thermometer, beaker, and a bench. Question A. The thermometer in figure 3.2 shows the room temperature, theta r, at the beginning of the experiment. Record theta r. Make sure when you read your scale, your eyes is perpendicular towards the scale. And over here, you will obtain a reading of this is 20, 21, and this is 22 degrees Celsius. When stating the temperature, 
make sure you include your units. And your answers are in two significant figures, since the scale here is two significant figures. Question B. The student pours 200 cm cube of hot water into the beaker. He places the thermometer in the water. He records the temperature theta of the hot water at time t equals to zero. He immediately starts a stopwatch. He records the temperature at 30 seconds intervals. The temperature readings are shown in table 3.1. Write the times in the first column and complete the column headings. This column here is representing the time, so the unit of measurement is seconds. And this is the theta, which is the temperature. The unit of measurement is degree Celsius. It mentions here that the experiment is started at t equals to 0 seconds. So for the first column here, we're going to put 0 seconds. And then he records the temperature at 30 seconds interval. So we're going to add up 30 at each interval. Question C, Part 1. Calculate the decrease in temperature between time t 0 and time t 90 seconds. So we are asked to find the temperature difference at t 0 and 90 seconds, which is the difference of 95 degrees Celsius and 72. The difference is 23 and don't forget your unit degree Celsius. Part 2. Calculate the difference in temperature between the temperature at time t equals to 0 and the room temperature. At time t equals to 0, the temperature was at 95 degrees Celsius and the room temperature was measured from here so it is 22 degrees Celsius. This will give us a difference of 73 degrees Celsius. Part 3. Calculate the decrease in temperature between time 90 seconds and time 180 seconds. At time 90 seconds and at time 180 seconds. So these are the values and the difference is 7 degrees Celsius. And the next part, calculate the difference in temperature between the temperature at time 90 seconds and room temperature. So as seen previously, 90 seconds is 72 degrees Celsius and at room temperature, it was 22 degrees Celsius. So the difference is 50 degrees Celsius. Next, question D. A student suggests that the decrease in temperature of the water in 90 seconds should be greater when the starting temperature is greater. Part 1. State whether the results agree with the suggestion. Justify your statement by reference to the results. When the temperature was at a higher starting point, in the period of 90 seconds, the difference is 23. And when the starting temperature was lower, in the period of 90 seconds, the change of temperature was only 7 degrees Celsius. So the statement was indeed correct. When you have a higher starting temperature, the temperature decreases more drastically. Part 3 suggests how you would continue the experiment using the same apparatus and method to investigate the suggestion. The suggestion is the relationship between decrease in temperature and its starting temperature. We can continue the experiment longer than 180 seconds or until we reach the room temperature. Question E. Refer to Table 3.1. Estimate the temperature of the water in the beaker after cooling for a further 90 seconds. During the first 90 seconds, the temperature decreased by 23 degrees Celsius. During the second 90 seconds, the temperature decreased by 7 degrees Celsius. So if I continue the experiment for another 90 seconds, the temperature should decrease less than 7 degrees Celsius. So any value from 59 to 63 is acceptable as long as the difference of 65 degrees Celsius with your answer is less than 7 degrees Celsius. Question 4. A student investigates the effect of changing the color of light on the focal length of a lens. The focal length f of a lens is given by the equation f equals to uv over u plus v. The distance u is the distance between an object and the lens. The distance v is the distance between the lens and the image that is formed on a screen. Plan an experiment to investigate the effect of changing the color of light on the focal length of a lens. When asked to plan an experiment, the first thing you should do is identify your variables. This will not give you any mark but it can help you to understand your experiment better. You can use the phrase I don't care to not forget what variables you're supposed to look for. The independent variable is the variable that you change in the experiment 
and over here you are changing the color of light is what you are measuring which is the value of f and the control variable is what you keep the same throughout the experiment so that this experiment is fair so you should use the same object for this experiment so that it will not change the image that is formed the image that is formed should only change based on the color of light next the following apparatus is available to the student illuminated object a selection of colored filters to change the color of the light converging lens screen and a meter ruler other apparatus normally available in school laboratory can also be used in your plan you should draw a labeled diagram to show the arrangement of the apparatus explain briefly how you would do the investigation draw a suitable table and state how you reach the conclusion okay for investigation type of question as long as you answer by bullet points you will be able to get a complete seven marks for this question so let's do it step by step firstly you are mentioned that you should draw a label diagram so if you do not draw a diagram you are going to miss out on your first mark okay so this will be the setup of your experiment whereby you have a light source and here is the filter which will change the color of the light source and then it will go through the converging lens and you will have the image formed on the screen it's given in the experiment that v is the distance between the lens and the screen and u is the distance between the object and the lens so make sure you include that in your diagram and that you have all your apparatus in your diagram and all of them are labeled bullet point two explain briefly how you would do the investigation include the measurements you would take for this experiment your first point is you should explain what's the setup of the apparatus like we're going to move this lens slowly away from the screen and when we get a very clear image of the object that would be the suitable point for the lens and you also have to include the measurements that you would take if you have watched my videos on planning investigation before i have came up with a way for you to explain your investigation without losing any points which is the monkey really rocks method m r r m stands for measure r record and another r is repeat this experiment is to find out the focal length so once you have found the perfect position of the lens and the screen to get a clear image we are going to measure the distance of u and v and then we can substitute the values of u and v to calculate the value of f and record that since this experiment is to investigate the change of different color filters and how it affects f we are going to repeat the experiment by using different color filters if you have these three keywords you should definitely be able to get a complete mark on how to explain your investigation bullet point three draw a suitable table with the column headings to show how you display your readings you are not required to enter any readings in the table so your manipulated variable here is using different color filters so you can write that into your first column and then you are measuring the value of u and v so u followed by the units and the distance of v followed by the units and make sure you have another column for what you are recording or what you are calculating which is f when recording table do not forget to include your units as this will give you the complete mark for this bullet point and for the last bullet point state how you would use your results to reach a conclusion the usual method to reach your conclusion is always to plot a graph however in this experiment we cannot plot a graph because we are using different colors instead so we are going to plot a bar chart and just like for plotting a graph you need to mention what goes on the x-axis which is the different colors and what goes on the y-axis which is the value of your f so we have answered all the four bullet points now we can write down all the bullet points into the answer space given as long as you answer everything according to the bullet point you should be able to get a complete seven marks I would really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe, like and comment on this video so you can keep continue watching videos like this. Thank you, have a nice day.